Bet you weren't expecting that to happen. Um, welcome back. This is Claude on Record. It is March 1st, 2020, and this is my first podcast after my dental surgery. So I do sound funny because it's a funny thing. So <laughs> I do sound funny. Um, but I'm doing my best to practice my speaking, my reading, my singing, my swearing, so that I can, you know, if I need to tell someone to fuck off, I can do it properly (laughs) and sound like myself. And that's very difficult right now. Uh, It's been a month. Um, but I am recovering nicely. I will be going in for my next appointment in April, and then we will see where we're at with my jaw and my bone structure and all that other stuff. See, I I heard that little slip. It's hard to form more uh, words that have the letter S in them right now. That's the, the most difficult for me. Um, it almost makes me not want to use any words with the letter S in them, but I'm trying my best, okay? Um, but here we are. It's the first day of March, and, well, I thought I would try something a little odd, which is why I have the synth thing going at the same time that I'm speaking. Isn't that cool? So, yeah, basically, um, this last month I've been doing mostly recovery. Um, Because I do sound a little funny, I'm still negligent, not negligent, what's the right word? Um, We'll just say I'm shying away from camera stuff right now because I think that although it looks really good, I'm still not used to it. And when I look in the mirror, I don't exactly see myself just yet. So I have a little bit of an identity crisis. (laughs) But um, I'm doing the best I can. What I've been doing a lot this last month is trying to focus on giving back to the community that's been so good to me and helped me through this horrible, well, okay, let me take that back. It's not a horrible situation. There's a lot of people that obviously have it worse. I know this. We have a possible pandemic going on. Uh, People are getting sick all over the world. And there's people dying from the coronavirus, so me having dental surgery is not that big of a deal if I put it in perspective compared to everything else that's going on in the world. Um, But I am super grateful for all the help and support that I've been getting, especially the really nice comments and sometimes a little jabs in the right direction as, you know, I can take a punch. And, of course, I can especially take a punch at myself. I know it sounds funny. So I'm doing the best I can. Um, so, yeah, this last month I focused a lot on mostly recovery. Uh, the first couple of weeks were really tough, really painful. Um, by the third week, I was a little bit better. We're approaching one month. Still hurts sometimes. And as I speak, it does get a little harder to keep it going. So it's not easy, okay? But I'm trying. So, you know, things are going to get better. Singing voice is coming along just fine. Luckily, nothing, there's nothing that involves my vocal cords. So therefore, you know, there's nothing wrong with my voice. It's just basically getting used to, uh, speaking again. And, you know, sometimes the way you sing something or speak, um, you know, 
when you have a, a surgery of this type, it takes time to reacclimate to your own speaking. So it is it is not easy. <laughs> um, another way that I've been uh, spending my time was to work on my FC page, which is almost done. Just a lot of back-end code I had to learn for the WordPress side of it so that the anythingbox.com site could link up to the Etsy stuff. And of course, I've been trying um, different aggregators and things like that to push the art. Um, also, I've been working on a couple of secret releases that will soon see the light of day. Um, one of these is, of course, the early Anything Box demos, and there's a lot of um, cool stuff from the archive that I've unearthed and, you know, went back in time and snatched from the old studio um, so that, you know, new music can happen. And one thing that did occur that I didn't expect was that this downtime actually made me want to write music, which is a little frustrating when you want to sing and you want to, you know, do some demos, but you realize you can't, or at least they're not going to sound the way you want. So that's tough. But um, one of the things that I like to do to, uh, you know, get over an adverse situation is find a positive. So for me, it was like, you know, I first dabbled in Reactor when I was doing the Distances album. Some of the, you know, really weird um, passages and all the, the little instrumentals in between the songs came from uh, a program that um, I use called Reactor. And during the time of distances, I honestly didn't build anything. I was using mostly things that I found in the user library. But um, devices like the one that's on the screen are devices that I've made myself, or I should say more accurately, wired up myself. Um, although in some cases, I have gone into the code and altered things. Here, I'll show you what it looks like. Looks like that. So, you know, I've been um, trying to learn more about streaming, uh, learn more about programming, um, uh, specifically um, to create more devices because I get a lot out of it. It's nice when I can sit down and play and sing and record. Um, so this downtime has actually helped me in that direction. I've also been um, trying to remember everything I wanted to say. This was completely unplanned. I didn't plan on doing it. And also, I did not script it. So I, I don't know what to tell you. But at the bottom of the video, you can see like my little mug on the right side, click on that and subscribe because one of the things I do want to talk about is subscriptions and why they're important to me. Um, as of this podcast, I have about 4.6 thousand subscribers and sadly enough, I need to bring that up to 10,000 and the reason that I have to bring it up is because I'm trying to do merchandise off of the YouTube channel and it won't let me do this until I've reached a certain number so help me out guys girls pets who happen to be on your owners laptops click on that subscribe button please help me out because that will definitely help me out in many different ways, especially when the art thing starts rolling around, because I'm going to be doing a lot of limited edition stuff, and I'm trying to find new ways to use my, my brain and my skills 
to really hone in on that spirit that anything box music is very related to the art. It always has been, but many people didn't know this coming in. So let me give you an example. I don't know how many people know it, but on the Peace album, that painting is mine. I did it. And on the Hope album, that painting is mine. I did it. Um, uh, the painting on Recovered and a lot of the 12 inches and all that. It's all my work. I always viewed art as almost the first um, career that I had. A lot of people don't know that, but it was. I was doing art shows in New York City and Jersey before the music thing took off. And the reason that I switched over and really focused more on music was because, let's be honest, at that time I found it easier to sell um, a cassette of the stuff that people heard that night and a shirt with my art on it than a canvas for a grand to some rich dude. I mean, it happens, but it happens very rarely, so it doesn't it's, it doesn't equate as a normal way of making money, or it didn't for me back then. Music just seemed like a simple way to survive. So I did, and in that survival, art sort of took a back seat. Um, so that said, I loathe that whole oh, you're a singer now wanting to be a painter. It's like that kind of stuff really annoys me because it's always been symbiotic with me. I've always done both, and both of them actually affect each other. Um, let me give you an example, a really good one. And yes, shameless plug, distances again. When I was working on distances, I had done a trip across the United States with nothing more than my camera and some tunes and a couple of really weird demos that I had going. And as I drove through the back roads, I would stop and take pictures. And these photographs became really important to the direction that I took the album because the photographs themselves were black and white, moody, and I was basically visiting desolate places and abandoned buildings and abandoned houses, farms, and that sort of thing. It had an effect on the mood of the record itself. So indeed, the trip, the photographs, um, the the type of art I was doing at the time, um, and even finding this weird little statue-like thing that I called the monolith that I came across at, um, at an abandoned, I think it was an abandoned um, gas station, I want to say, something like that. And I found this weird thing and began to photograph it a lot and it wound up being part of the album cover and some of the interior art. So art has always influenced the music. That's the point. And vice versa. Sometimes the music influences the art. So more recently I've been getting into a lot of IDM and really strange electronic music, um, some noise stuff and it's influenced a lot the way that I've been approaching art. Um, finding the flex seal stuff and then using liquid rubber to paint onto, you know, different surfaces has definitely, oops, <laughs> one of those times, using the flex seal has changed the way that, um, I approach art, but that came from listening to weird music. So as, you know, as weird as it may seem to hear this, my brain just works that way. There's a visual aspect and then there's a musical aspect and the two talk to each other and somewhere in between there's lyrics. So sometimes 
the art can influence influence music, which in turn influences lyrics, or sometimes it's the other way around. The music influences lyrics, and then I read them back, and I get an image in my head, and wow, I'm painting. So to me, those things are all intertwined into one massive thing. So, you know, during this downtime, I've been painting a little bit more, and I've been playing with these weird devices, like I said, <clears throat> And it's helped me tremendously to not only come up with like new and unique ways of expressing myself, but it's giving me a lot of great ideas for really what I consider to be interesting songs. So I hope that somehow it's going to all coalesce at one point, especially when I feel better. Um, so, you know... Yeah, I, I'm sorry I'm talking mostly about myself on this podcast without giving too much advice, but there is one last final thing that's coming up because I was going to do a podcast on this before my surgery, but, you know, it's always my, my goal uh, to help others that are starting out and... Um, to give them advice because we live in a very strange world where right now everything is thought of as social only or downloads only versus physical products. Should I do vinyl? You know, all these different questions come up and it's funny. I get asked these questions too, but the one topic that I wanted to bring up today besides all the other stuff I just talked about was what happens if you are a musician, you know, and you have an Instagram and you have your Facebook or your YouTube and all that stuff, but you're really not that handy with a camera. It's, you know, the visual side of the music really means nothing to you. It, you don't know it. You don't care to know it. And it's just not who you are. You're really just a musician. What do you do? Well, before I get into the answer, because I have an answer for you, I'm going to tell you what you should not do. The first thing that you don't want to do is try to make that happen, meaning I'm going to try to learn how to draw so that I can be the guy that does all the covers of my album. And um, Unless, of course, you love to do this. If you always love to draw and you want to take classes because you want to become the, quote, the artist that does your own album covers, by all means, do it. But if in reality you're not a graphics person, you never designed anything in your life, and you're really new to it, I would not do a 30-day subscription to Illustrator and Photoshop and suddenly put something together. And I'm going to tell you why. One, it takes away from the music. Really crappy designs or the, the way the design looks actually takes you away from the music a little bit. So that's not a good idea. Two, I believe that because a person who's very inexperienced in design and doesn't know that they're actually starting a dialogue of what what branding experts you are going to call a brand uh, story. Um, since you don't know what you're doing, you could be taking your music and your art in completely different directions. In other words, in other words, <laughs> had trouble with that one. You know, your album cover may look very heavy metal-ish, whereas the music that you're making is punk rock. Or you're making punk rock, but the cover looks a lot like a disco record. If you meant it to be that way and it's a joke, cool. If you didn't, you're in big trouble, right? So what I would suggest, and this is really good advice, this particular bit. It, well, someone might say it's shitty advice. I don't care. It's my show. It's my opinion, right? But it's my opinion that if you are a new musician just starting out and you don't really have a good Instagram account and you don't have a really good visual representation of your band, it is your duty now to go to some art shows, 
in some uh, photography shows and meet up with a potential up-and-coming artist or photographer that you admire, someone that somehow in your mind fits with it within your music. If you're able to make this happen, and let's just say that it happens, you now have a friend and an ally who is the visual representation of what the music is. And on the other hand, you are now a supporter and an ally to that artist and that designer because all your music is basically using the talents that someone else has. And to me, this is a win-win situation. The artist and designer wins because his designs are appearing on shirts and all kinds of cool things that this musician's putting out. The musician wins because now he has a branding visual story, something that will actually help him sell more records. Oh, oh God, I just said records. Oh, God. It'll help you brand your band better by having a visual aspect attached to it that makes sense. And, you know, eventually you might partner up with this visual artist slash designer and the two of you can make um, relatable merch, uh, which means you can make t-shirts where you guys uh, collaborate, not only on the design, but of course the cost, and share in the profits. It's like having a different sort of band. So yeah, you know, one's an artist, the other is the visual side. And historically, we've seen a lot of that uh, in some of the in some of the bands that I love, like for example, Depeche Mode with Anton Corbin. Uh, it could be argued that Anton was a new photographer just starting out. But as a videographer, I don't think he'd done any videos before Depeche. So it was nice that they believed in his talents, brought him in, and he's basically become a very, a very good visual uh, tool for Depeche Mode. And it could be argued that Depeche Mode was definitely a good vehicle for Anton. So if you're starting out and you have not figured out what your visual thing is, I would suggest go to art shows, go to photography shows, meet up with photographers until you find someone that's up and coming like you are that you can basically uh, work with. And I'm, I'm a very strong believer of these kinds of alliances. Well, first of all, you would have two Instagram accounts, right? You would have the artist's Instagram, Instagram account, and he would be pushing his art, but also your releases. And on the other hand, you would have your um, music account and on which you would post shows and things like that, but also showcase the art that your friend is doing for you. And I think that that's, again, a win-win situation. Anyway, I don't think I can speak anymore because it's limited how long I can. And I don't want to overtax myself, but I wanted to start giving back to this wonderful support I've been giving. So getting, <laughs> sorry, unedited. So what I'm going to do is try to get back into the swing of things, uh, especially this month. And... I will continue to keep everyone updated, and hopefully I'll do more funky uh, little um, uh, posts like this. Thank you, and I'll see you next time. Oh, hit that subscribe button. Remember what I said? I need 10,000 subscribers. Please do it. <laughs> Spread the word, yo. Thank you.